Alright man, so clutch replacement on the Suzuki GSX 750 ES Katana. Um, this is also going to work for the GSX 750 uh, ES. Uh, they've got the same clutch setup. So first of all, just get some sort of bracing underneath the bike. Okay, next, next step is here. Just take off this little pin. Securing the clutch cable. Alright, so... Once you've taken that off, you can then detach the clutch cable. All right. Remove all the bolts. Alright, great little tip. So if you take a piece of cardboard or whatever, that will allow you to place all the bolts uh, in an order so you know how to put them back in because um, those are all different lengths. I mean, not all of them are different lengths, but some of them are different lengths. So it's good to know uh, where they actually go back. So that's what I'm doing. I've got my little diagram. There we go, that's what it looks like. Let's put it aside. It's a case of taking the clutch cover off and I know that gasket bef uh, beneath it is ruined already so I'm not going to care too much about uh, being careful with it. Uh, best way to do it is to grab it here and here at the bottom we've got this prime point. Wiggle it a couple of times. There we go. And then we've got the gasket here which unfortunately is ruined because it's, it's broken here, so I'll just take it all off. There we go. Now we're going to have to remove all those bolts that hold the pressure plate. And that will be 10 millimeter socket. Alright, so same thing again, do it in the cross pattern. First one, second, third, fourth, five and six okay so all are pre-loosened all right then so let's remove all of them that way you'll be able to remove your uh, pressure plate okay comes off just don't forget you've got this bit here with uh, needle bearings so don't lose it those are your needle bearings so inspect them and those seem to be in lovely condition there we go also you've got this piece here, this washer, so don't, don't lose it too. You can remove all your plates. So this is going to be a combination of friction plates with steels and all of that stuff has to come off. Now removing of those can be a bit of a pain in the ass, especially once you've removed the first few. So what I recommend is using those picks uh, and that will allow you to uh, grab them nicely. So let's start from the top here, as you can see, quite a few of them actually come out. There we go. And tip number two, you always try to arrange it in an, in an order so you know how to put them back. So you know that the first plate facing outwards was the actual friction plate, so that will go down, then there was a steel plate then friction plate, then steel plate, then friction plate, and again, then there was a steel, then there was a friction plate, and a steel, come on, then you've got your friction plate, steel, friction, 
there's just a few more. And as I said, this might be a bit tricky to get them out, but I think I'll manage. There we go. Okay, steel, friction, steel, friction. So if you take a closer look down here, so if you take a closer look down here, see this wire here? And that is what holds that steel plate. And I'm not going to be removing it because there's no need for that. Right, here we have it. So this is a full set of new friction plates. There's going to be eight of them for this particular application. And if you just have a look at the difference in color between those two plates. So here the bright one is the new one and the dark one is the old one. So not only this one, you can, you can tell it's like sort of burnt because it's pretty much black. Also, if you look at the thickness of the friction material, you, you can tell that on the bright one, you can really clearly see that the friction material is present there. Okay, whereas if you look at this plate here, it's almost glazed. It's literally a fraction of a millimeter what's left. Whereas this has some thickness. And this is why your clutch slips, because that becomes thinner and thinner and thinner, and then all those plates just can't grab anymore. Okay, so installation of new clutch plates. Before you do that, it's actually a good idea to... Uh, good idea. It's necessary to soak them in oil. So if you take a closer look here, you'll see that I've actually put them in the basin um, and they sat in this uh, fresh engine oil for about two hours or so. And there we go. Because the metal plate is the first one in, now what we're going to put in is going to be uh, the friction plate. Then our next one is the steel plate. Now people always worry about which way do they go in because one side has a little chamfer here and the other side has an edge. And you know what, I've done a couple of clutches on you know, a variety of my bikes and it, I've done it that way and that way and it never matters so don't worry. Okay, that went in. And of course now we've got the next friction plate. It sits in. Okay, next we've got brand new clutch springs, and those are quality EBC clutch springs, heavy duty springs. And uh, if I could just tell you what the difference is, those provide a lot better clamp because look, they're actually longer. Look what's the length difference on those springs. You can clearly tell that it's about probably, probably three millimeters. Uh, of difference, so those will provide definitely better clamp. Okay, so pressure plate goes in. So here's the spring, and here's uh, the bolt. There we go. There's always a bit of a pain in the ass to do that because you need to squeeze it. Okay, obviously, we do it all in the cross pattern, so let's go for the bottom. So I'm squeezing it, another one. And let it grab and now let's get them snug now let's get them snug all 
right, right, right then. So we've got the torque wrench here. As you can see, I've set it to 11 newton meters. All right, so let's put the new gasket on. That's the new gasket. And uh, before I put it on, I've applied a very small amount of um, RTV on that surface here, just to make the gasket stick better. And now it's a time. Now it's a time for a part, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. We're just putting the cover on. You see, the problem is you've got that bit here, and you've got those teeth on it. Those grooves. See those grooves here? So that has to be turned backwards towards the exhaust side of the motorcycle, and it has to engage. It has to engage with this here, with this mechanism. Okay, so that's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass, but hopefully, hopefully it will work. Okay, so I've got it on, and now it's time for the bolts. So here we have it, I've got my little diagram, so I know that this corresponds with the oil temperature gauge, so I know that the first bolt is the one here. Right man, so now just torque down all the bolts. Um, you can obviously use a torque wrench if you want to, this would be probably about 14 newton meters, but you know, I'll just go with a normal wrench. I'll just give them nice and snug and that should be enough. And now let's put the cable on this pivoting arm. Push it in. Of course your um, pin goes through. And then the security pin just to uh, keep it in place. And that is it man. Obviously um, if you've lost some oil you're gonna have to replenish it. I've lost probably about hundred milliliters so I'm gonna pour it in, in a moment. Alright then so then it's just a matter of adjustment. Uh, so here you've got your adjustment screw so turning it uh, counterclockwise makes it looser and turning it uh, clockwise uh, makes it tighter. And then you also have the second point of adjustment and then of course you've got your second point of adjustment which is at your clutch lever so you want to have your free play for about, I don't know, three millimeters like I do have now. And that is it. Thanks for watching. Till next time.